is the Beta Care 101 with her dog Jessie. Guess what day it is, Jessie? Just take a guess. It's Fan Friday. Do you guess that? <laughs> yep. Too hot to be inside. Too hot to be outside. But I guess we're gonna do this inside because they seem a little bit more comfortable in here than they did outside. Um, just as a reminder, if you guys want to make an intro to Fan Friday, all you have to do is leave it as a video response to this video. Let's get on to the questions. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you. Thank you, Shelby. Almost birthday girl. Shelby's birthday is August 8th, you guys. She's going to be five years old. I oh, know. Five years old. Oh. Christina wants to know, what do you think is the most difficult thing about owning a husky? Um, I would have to say the hair. You can see there's some hair in the corner over there. Jamie literally just vacuumed yesterday. Yesterday. So I would say keeping up with the shedding. Shedding. Jack wants to know, how was Jamie's birthday? If you guys want to know how Jamie's birthday was, you can go to our other channel, which is youtube.com slash withoutthesnowdogs, and there'll be a video that went up yesterday and one that'll go up tomorrow, I believe, both on Jamie's birthday. Thanks for all the birthday wishes for Jamie, too. He really appreciated it. Amy wants to know if our huskies shed all year long. Um, anybody that tells you that huskies only shed twice a year, they're wrong. Huskies do shed twice a year for six months at a time. Husky shed every single day. Um, Shelby's done blowing her coat. Shiloh's done blowing her coat. But if you look at Oakley, you can see, I'll try to draw it out, where there's like less fur here than there is, say, there or there. Thanks for laying down, Oakley. That's pretty good. That middle section is where she has let me brush her undercoat out that she's blowing. This little section here and here, that's where there's still fluff. Um, but even when that's gone, it, they're still going to shed. So, yeah, mine shed all year long. Every day. All the time. Thanks for getting your antlers, Shelby. Angel wants to know, my dog Lucy's teeth sometimes bleeds when eating bones. Would antler chews be better? Shelby has an antler chew right now that she's chewing on. Um, I don't know that they would be better. If it's her gums that are bleeding, it may be um, gingivitis. So the antler chews, Shelby have grass hanging on you. The antler chews will definitely help with cleaning their teeth and things like that. So maybe that might help. I don't notice the girl's teeth bleeding from the antler chews like I used to notice when I used to give them rawhide years ago. So you could always try it, see what happens. I definitely don't think it could hurt that good antler. Don't forget, you guys, we sell these antlers in our online store at gonetothesnowdogs.com. Sarah wants to know, we are going to be picking out our first husky next month. What should we look for when picking out of the litter? Does picking a boy or a girl make a big difference? Um. If you want my honest opinion, if it's your first husky, I would rescue one over getting a puppy because you're in for a world of fun if you're getting your first husky puppy. Right, Shelby? Um, second thing, make sure it's a good breeder. Champion bloodlines, OFA certifications, hip and eye certifications. You know, check to make sure that their lineage, that they have a good lineage, that you're not just buying from some breeder just because. As long as you're buying from a reputable breeder and not just some backyard breeder who thinks they know what they're doing because they've had huskies forever, you should be pretty safe no matter which puppy you pick. And personally, I don't think boy or girl makes a difference. We have girl dogs just because we've always had girl dogs. But my friends got boy dogs and they act just like these ones, so I don't think it really matters. Micah had a really fun question. Micah wants to know, have the dogs ever been lost or gone missing? If so, what happened? Um, Shiloh actually went, she wasn't really missing because we could see her the whole time. When, right before Jamie and I got married, we lived in a house that did not have a fenced in backyard and Shiloh used to be on a tie out. And this was before Shelby, before Oakley, before any of the other dogs. And a dog ran through our backyard and Shiloh managed to slip her collar and take off after the dog. They ran across two main roads. Jamie took off on foot after her and I got in the Jeep. I think it was a Jeep. No, we had a truck at the time. I got in the truck. Um, I got in the truck and headed towards the lake because that's where both dogs were headed. Um, she actually ran probably about a mile and a half before the other dog I guess went home because when I found her and Jamie, she was slowly walking back to Jamie with that I'm so sorry look and she walked right back to him and got in the truck and we went home. So I don't know that I would consider that missing, but that was one of our stories of when we almost lost Shiloh. When she ran across that main road, I could see her and Jamie and I thought both of them were going to get hit by a car. But thank goodness neither of them did, right? 
You scared us that day though, didn't you? You scared us that day. I know you did. I got a really tough question today from Rye. Um, I'm going to try to answer it. Uh, this is all based on my opinion and the few things I looked up online. Rye's husky has been killing small animals. Birds, squirrels, snakes, possums, praying mantis. Pretty much anything that the dog can find in the backyard or even when on a leashed hike. And they want to know if there's anything that they can do to stop this. Their vet told them that once a dog kills, a dog will always kill and has a taste for blood. I honestly don't believe that because if that was true, I mean, if that was true, the dogs that have been fighting dogs, like the pit bulls that they rehabilitate and then go into loving homes, or the dogs that have bitten people and then get rehabilitated and go into loving homes, that wouldn't happen if once a killer, always a killer. I definitely don't believe the once a killer, always a killer, like your vet said. When I was reading a few things online, um, basically it looks like you may need to contact a professional trainer to really train your dog not to do it, but there are preventative things you can do. One of the things I read is if your dog's going to be outside by itself for any long period of time and you can't really keep an eye on them, get a big bell, like a cow bell or a jingle bell. Maybe not a cow bell. Although I bet a cow bell would work. Um, and put it on their collar. Um, maybe even like a jingle harness, something so that when the dog's out there for those periods of time when you can't be with the dog, there's a bell ringing as the dog's moving around, so hopefully small animals and things like that won't come into your yard. As for the dog killing things while you're walking the dog, um, pay better attention to the dog. Knowing that the dog can attack in a moment's notice, maybe try using a two foot training lead instead of like a six foot leash or a retractable leash. Um, use a two foot leash, that way the dog is forced to be next to you all the time. That's actually the kind of leash we use a lot with Shelby because um, Shelby can sometimes be a little bit strange when she's on leash. She doesn't tend to like to be on leash all that much when we're walking and there's other strange dogs. Sometimes she can get mouthy. Um, so I keep her on a short leash most of the time when we're walking in unfamiliar areas. But those are the few suggestions that I had. Um, if you have more questions about it, you can post them next Friday for Fan Friday or you can go ahead and message me and I'll see what else I can find out. But that's what I found out so far. And like I said, I honestly don't believe once a killer, always a killer. I think that you should be able to help your dog. And if you guys are wondering why that couch cushion is missing, because I've noticed I've shown it a few times in the video, somebody peeked on my couch cushion. Thank goodness they're watchable. <laughs> Who was it, huh? I think it was you. Yes, it was. We got a letter and a picture today from Kira and her husky Nika. And she also sent this drawing. Oh, so Shelby and Oakley. Thank you for sending that. I think, girls. I think, Wessie. Look how cute. Pretty cute, huh? I know, pretty cute. We also got this drawing from, I believe it says Callie, of Shiloh, Shelby, and Oakley. And we got this drawing for Oakley, because she said she likes Oakley very much. She said Shiloh is her number one favorite in her mind, and Shelby is her number two favorite in her mind. Thank you for sending those to us. We got some photos and a drawing from My Malty Poo Oliver on YouTube. There's a letter and some pictures. They wanted to know what got Shelby and I started and interested in agility. Um, somebody once told me that Huskies couldn't do agility, so we thought we would try it. And they also want to know when you started Shiloh and Shelby's channel, were you hoping they would get famous? Not really. We were doing it more just for fun. I mean, we still do it pretty much just for fun. Um, I'm still surprised every day by how popular they are getting. <laughs> Thanks for sending that to us. That's all we have for this hot sweltering fan Friday today, you guys. It's kind of a long one. You guys have been asking me to do a longer one, so I figured if we're stuck in here, I'd do a longer one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on Monday. Goodbye. <gasps> what? Can you say goodbye? Goodbye. Goodbye. What? Goodbye. You got something in your eye. Huffy. Huffy. Don't forget, if you guys would like to send us anything in the mail, our P.O. Box address is gone to the Snow Dogs. P.O. Box 12, Alpena, Michigan, 49707. And if you have questions for Fan Friday, you can leave them on our Facebook page or on our Twitter page, which are listed on the screen. Thanks for watching, you guys.